So good morning, or I think it's afternoon now. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I did find out this morning about 1020 from a call from a doctor that I was tested positive for the coronavirus. Um, at that time, I put together an uh, you know, email to go out to everyone. I tried to tell my immediate family, of course, first, and then I did put together an email to send out to the community to let everyone know. Um, and I, um, you know, after that, just spoke to the individuals after speaking to Dr. Zucker with the team, which is our protocol. Uh, he told me who I needed to inform. And I started the process over the next hour or so informing people that I was required to inform that they are to self-quarantine from for two weeks until March 26th. Cool. All right. Actually, I'm sorry. If I could jump in for one second. Uh, Jessica from CBS Best Best, we, we do have permission to record this, right? So uh, they have permission to record it, and I'm also recording it if that's helpful in any way. Yeah. So in other words, for playback on TV and all that. Sure. Great. Okay. Thanks. And, uh, all right, anybody have questions? Yeah. Uh, this is Ashley from News 12. How are you? I'm good. I hope you're feeling okay. Um, so one of my questions was, for, so the students, we're told that um, you were handing out uh, laptops to students. Is that correct? So on Wednesday, I did go out and hand uh, laptops to students. But I did not develop symptoms until across sometime on Thursday. So while yes, it's correct on Wednesday the 11th, I did hand out laptops. I did not uh, have any symptoms until sometime on Thursday. So I, I understand that this virus is um, also asymptomatic. So being that you were in, um, in close proximity with those students, do you feel like they should get tested? Should they take any precautions? So uh, I spoke to Dr. Glazier from the Westchester County Department of Health today, and he confirmed that only from the time in which I had symptoms, I should back it up from the beginning of that day and inform people that they are uh, self-quarantined, as is their families, for a period starting uh, the 12th through March 26th. I know that they're not testing people unless people develop symptoms. So anybody that I'm informing that asks about being tested, they'll only be tested if they develop symptoms. And I believe from all of the information that I've been provided that um, being tested before you have symptoms could cause you to get tested again, need to get tested again after having symptoms. Okay, and those are all my questions for now. Thank you. Sure. Hi, can you hear me? This is Jessica. Um, I'm just wondering, how many people do you approximately have to notify? Um, oh, many people. So it's going to be hard to give you a number because on Thursday the 12th, I visited three schools. So in addition to my secretaries and my cabinet, um, and people at the central office that I keep in contact with, those I could probably count up. But then after that, I did go into three schools. I went into Barnard, Isaac Young, and uh, Trinity. And so I notified those principals today. And those principals are notifying individuals I came in contact with and the school community because I could have come in contact with someone walking through the hallway or someone we can't recount. So this is Ashley from News 12 again. Is anybody else's oh, audio? Sorry, can, can, you, can, can you make sure that your uh, microphone is muted? My mic, is it my microphone? Oh, no, Ken, my? Valenti, Ken Valenti needs to mute his microphone because he keeps popping up on the video. Okay, oh, all right. uh, yeah, let me figure out how to do that. Sounds better. Okay, he's muted. Sounds better now. Is, okay. any, is anybody else's audio going in and out? Not right now. 
now. I found that when Dr. Fahey was talking, um, it would it would get really low at times and then it would come right back up. But maybe it's just for me. Let's see. That's happening to me too, Ashley. Okay. All right. Well, Thanks. maybe if everybody can mute unless you're talking, maybe that'll be helpful. I agree. Okay. Ashley, you ready? Or who somebody was about to speak. I think it was Jessica. I had just oh, hi, Jessica. the audio. Oh, um, yes, hi. Um, glad you're that you're to see her doing well. Um, where did you get tested? Sure, I got tested. Uh, I live in Long Island, so I got tested in Pro Health in Plainview. Now, Dr. Fair, you... it's Tony Aiello. Um, Hi, Tony, how are you? I'm, I'm fine. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Can you talk to us about your experience uh, with symptoms and um, what the doctors have told you to this point? Sure. So, um, I, you know, I had uh, early symptoms were just a little bit of chills, feeling cold. Um, I later had body aches, I guess, joint aches, and um, my eyes were achy. Um, some coughing and a little bit of shortness of breath, but I think my symptoms have been pretty mild compared to others that I understand. I've had fever. I never had any fever at any point. Um, I wasn't actually sure it was even going to test positive because of that. Um, so that's mostly it. Hot and cold periods, joint pains, uh, eye pain, and um, some coughing, which is periodic. And a shortness of breath, also periodic. I spoke to the doctor this morning when they called with my test results. And because of that, they had no further recommendations. They gave me two prescriptions, which I have yet to pick up. One is an inhaler for the breathing. And another one is cough medicine to slow the cough. But other than that, there have been no other medical recommendations. Is that uh, buterol or something they're giving you? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't swear to it because they called it straight in and I didn't pick it up yet. So I don't even have it to confirm. Okay. I think one may be on back order. So, What's your level of concern um, regarding visiting the schools on the day before you came down with the symptoms? So uh, I actually visited the schools on the day where I later came down with symptoms, um, you know, uh, to the degree that I uh, didn't know anything was going to transpire on that day. I was going to check in with schools because that's the day we made the decision to close. And I felt like I wanted to get out there to all the schools. The reason I ended up only getting to three is because Dr. Marrero got to a few of them. And then I just did the ones he hadn't all completed. Um, so, you know, I think this, the point in which I had the information, um, it was already, the day was, you know, passed. I'm just notifying people, as I said, that Dr. Zucker recommended from uh, the morning of the day of symptoms. Were you practicing social distancing on those, uh, on that day? Absolutely. Were you yeah, I had can you, the can standard, you... you know, handshake was this, um, and I was sitting uh, apart from people, but I was in a room with a group of teachers. I did walk through a couple of classrooms and spoke to students. Um, I don't know if, I don't believe I was, um, I wasn't close to anyone, but I don't know if I was six to ten feet away from each and every person the way it's now recommended. And what's your mindset? Look, you know, other people are going through it. Uh, I have to go through it. You know, I think we all have to get past this and um, keep ourselves distance. You know, only essential people going in at this point. And, um, you know, look, hopefully I'll be immune to it and that'll give me the opportunity to get back to work when I can. Um, hey, Dr. Fahey, um, do you know do you know where you might have picked up the symptoms from? If it was from one of the students or from one of your family, 
I have no idea where I picked up the symptoms from, but I will tell you that the family that I've been in the house with since uh, Friday has absolutely no symptoms, none of them. I have done exactly from that uh, Thursday when I was symptomatic, you know, Friday when it was really there. Um, I have my own room. I'm very fortunate to have a room to be able to stay in by myself. And I'm using my own bathroom. So I've kept myself away from uh, my family. They've been great delivering food to the door. And I have my own dishes that I use and my own glasses. Nothing that I'm using is circulating back in the room. And no one else is using the bathroom that I'm using downstairs. Um, there's been, you know, it's been a back and forth debate whether um, you should just close schools, not close the schools. Do you think you should have closed them earlier? Um, do you still stand by your decision to keep them open? I do. With the information we had at the time, I absolutely think kids were safest in school. At that point, no one was staying at home. So we knew the schools were clean. We knew where kids were and who they were interacting with. We knew they would be fed. So we think it was the right decision. And the day we didn't think it was the right decision, you know, I made the call to close schools. The attendance was dropping. I did go out and speak to people in the community. And, um, and Isaac Young was already in a place where it may need to have closed. And so we made the decision to close the remaining schools. Have you heard anything about any positive cases other than you in the New Rochelle School community? Uh, we do have a confirmed case of someone at Isaac Young. Yes. Was that a staff member or a it was student? A staff member that happened after. Um, it was a staff member that happened after schools were closed. There are um, another case that uh, the person was not symptomatic. So we're only notifying the community, and we were uh, informed by Dr. Zucker, if people were symptomatic while in uh, school, that we notify the school community. This last one at Isaac Young, uh, schools had already been closed, but we did let everyone know because uh, he was at the school symptomatic, even though school was closed, we did let people know. And uh, uh, do you know of any uh, students that have been confirmed there in, uh, in, the, in the school district? Uh, I, I do know of a student who was confirmed, uh, but not with symptoms in school. Okay. Uh, from which school, Dr. Fayo? Uh, so because we didn't notify anyone, I'm not going to say what school, because they were not symptomatic in school. A couple questions, Dr. Feo. Um, so our, your, your email said that uh, basically that uh, people like your cabinet and so forth, the key people that you're with, yeah. um, should sort of use their best judgment. Um, are any of them uh, self-quarantining, self-isolating, um, and otherwise unavailable to you know, sure. be in the city hall and, and engaged? So right now, uh, each of my cabinet members is under self-quarantine. We had a cabinet meeting on Thursday. And so they are self-quarantined for the period through the 26th. Um, you know, we're still running the district from schools are closed. So we're still able to run the district uh, over the phone in terms of what we're doing. But the cabinet will not is self-quarantined. So in particular, uh, your assistant superintendent for business has been running the food distribution. So what's the impact on him? So he was uh, there on the 12th at a meeting with me. So he self-quarantined until the 26th. Uh, Dr. Bongo, Dr. Marrero, uh, and uh, I did tell Anna and Peter, I don't remember if both of them were at that cabinet meeting. Anna Relusco and Peter Scordo. I did let them know if they were in my presence. I just don't remember if both of them were at the cabinet. Typically, the medical people say you really need to be in a room with people for an extended time to have a more likelihood of 
transmission, mm -hmm. not just sort of walking past people in the hallway, although that could happen. So other than your cabinet meeting, did you have any other meetings where you were in a closed room for any extended period of time with a group of people? Uh, I don't believe I had any other meetings, but I did let my two secretaries know because they were as close proximity as in the room. Um, I did uh, also let uh, Keith Watkins know because I believe I walked in that room at one point. So even though that may be the advice, um, Dr. Glazier asked me if anyone that I came in contact with on that day to let those people know. So I did, in fact, do that. Well, speaking of, sorry, speaking of Keith Watkins, so I've gotten quite a few calls from buildings and grounds staff. Mr. Watkins is part of the buildings and grounds or facilities crew. Um, so they're all complaining that they shouldn't be at work because... Uh, it's risky, and uh, now they're saying the governor's saying non-essential workers, and some of these people who are carpenters or HVAC people or painters, they feel they're not their work is non-essential. So, I know that just changed on Friday. Is there going to be any decision regarding those employees? Are they going to be back at work next week, or are they going to be kept home as well? They are all calling, wanting to know. So that's an evolving situation too, because of. In terms of cleaning the buildings and the buildings we need to clean as we find information. So essential work will continue and we're going to have to make those decisions as the information we have as things need to get done, who needs to come in and when they need to come in and how often. Uh, really not a question for you specifically, but I did ask people uh, with the governor yesterday whether they would consider uh, removing the designation of uh, the north end of New Rochelle as a containment zone, considering that the restrictions statewide are actually more restrictive than the containment zone. Do you have any thoughts about whether the governor ought to somehow amend that so that New Rochelle is no longer being singled out? Uh, that is totally up to the information the CDC has. But at this point, it is, you know, the movement and non-essential workers should not be moving anyway. So it just seems a moot point since uh, everyone that shouldn't, uh, doesn't need to go to work, shouldn't be moving around anyway freely. So I don't know that it's um, something that has any bearing on now or any relevance now. Thank you. Okay. Any other, yeah. Any other questions? We're good. Well, thank you very much. I will send this video to Ken, but if you videoed it already, you won't need it.